If you are always looking for new recipes to try, but you're a little scared to just try one that you randomly find on the internet, that's why I'm here. I find new recipes all the time. We test them and if they, we deem them winners, then we pass them on to you in what we call a winner dinners video. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the making. To start off this week, I have some leftover taco meat in the fridge. So what to do with leftover taco meat. There's lots of different things you can do. You can make like a smoky kind of Mexican flavored chili. There's lots of different things, but I've always wanted to try this. I've seen this done a million times and I'm gonna attempt it. I laugh because I'm not a baker and this is probably gonna turn out very ugly compared to all the pretty pictures online, but we're gonna go with it. Today, I'm gonna be making a taco crescent roll ring. Yeah, I have all the ingredients on hand, so why not? Let's do it. To get started, we are gonna preheat the oven to 375. Okay, for this recipe, I'm gonna be using my pizza stone and I'm gonna be using these two rolls of crescent rolls. They are the sweet Hawaiian brand or flavor. I think that'll be just fine. Okay, so I have my two cans here. They seem a little dry. I've never used this Aldi brand before. I hope they're gonna be all right. But we need to basically make a starburst pattern here on our pizza dish. It's okay if it is hanging off the edge because we're gonna roll it in. How do I have one left? <laughs> Okay, well, it's always comedy hour when I try to do anything with dough or anything like that. Here, let's just do this. I'm gonna stick an extra one in right there. It'll be okay, right? Sure, Mandy, sure. Famous last words. Now, my taco meat is still refrigerated, so it's definitely not hot, so I may have to bake this for a little bit longer. You'll need about a pound of ground beef or the taco meat to put in the middle, so you're just gonna put it in the portion closest to the center of the circle. And I'm pretty sure you get extra points if you make a mess. So in other words, I'm always winning. Again, just kind of using what I have. I've got some mozzarella cheese here. I'm gonna sprinkle that all over the top. Use whatever cheese you would like, or you could just leave the cheese off, it's up to you. Now, the fun part, we're gonna take the edges and pull them over and you wanna tuck them under just so that they will stick or stay and not fall off. Okay, that's not too bad. This is going in the oven at 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes. We're gonna serve this with some shredded lettuce, some tomatoes, some hot sauce, and sour cream. Okay, I cooked this or baked this for about 18 to 19 minutes, and it's golden brown around the edges. Told you it wouldn't be pretty. In the pictures that I see, everybody puts all of this stuff in the middle but I didn't want to put it onto a hot stone, so. Okay, I couldn't take it. I had to just put some in the middle. It is what it is. I didn't cover up the entire thing. Honestly, I just needed to take a picture from a website so that I could put the recipe on there and it would look halfway decent, so there we go, folks. And because we overlapped all of this, I am gonna go in with a pizza cutter and just cut these into individual little bites, pretty much, because otherwise, since they were overlapped, they would kind of pull all together. It looks good. It's yeah. like comfort food. <laughs> yeah. Little finger foods. Little finger food action. He put some, what kind of hot sauce did you put on I yours? I just put Tabasco on mine. Okay. Yeah. The Chipotle kind or the regular? The Chipotle Tabasco, okay. yeah. Yeah. It's really good. You like that? I like it. I think it's a really good way of using up that meat. Yeah, absolutely. Cole, what do you think? Really good. All right. Well, I'm going to dig in and see what I think. I mean, this is nothing really fancy obviously but great way to use that leftovers up just wanted to jump on here and let y'all know what i thought i love the sweetness of these sweet hawaiian crescent rolls it's like a good sweet and savory mixture i think i'm gonna go get another couple of these don't tell anybody before we get started on the second recipe i wanted to thank butcher box for sponsoring today's video if you've been around for a while, you know how much we love ButcherBox in our house. We have been ButcherBox members for, I think right at two years now. I can't really remember a time before ButcherBox. And I remember when we first signed up and started getting ButcherBox meat delivered directly to our door, I remember thinking, okay, well that's pretty cool. I mean, it'll save me a trip to the grocery store, no big deal. Y'all, it is a big deal. Their meat is unbeatable. It's unbeatable in price and in taste and flavor. Your family's gonna love it. They have 100% grass-fed and pasture-raised beef, free-range USDA-certified organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free. They have wild-caught seafood, including salmon, cod, scallops, haddock, and the ButcherBox bacon, which is one of our favorites, is sourced 
from humanely raised pork. It's uncured, nitrate-free, and sugar-free. ButcherBox sources from farmers and fishermen who meet the highest standards of quality. So how does it work? So basically, you're gonna go and click the link below. That link has a special deal attached to it. I'll tell you about that in a second. And then you choose your box. So they offer five different boxes. They offer four curated boxes, and then one is the most popular box. It's the one that we always get, which is the custom box, where you get to choose each and every cut that comes in your box. Then once you place that order, ButcherBox ships your order frozen at peak freshness. One thing that I really love about ButcherBox is that it's already frozen, number one, at peak freshness and in the ind individual portions pretty much that you would use. So you don't have to go to the grocery store, bring it all home and then freeze it yourself. But I digress, let's get back to them shipping your order. It comes directly to your door in a 100% recyclable box. Then you just go to your doorstep, you grab it, you bring it inside, you stick it directly into your freezer and then thaw it out as you need it. It is wonderful. And ButcherBox just believes in better. For ButcherBox, better means treating our planet with respect. It means caring for the lives of animals and livelihoods of farmers. Ultimately, it just means better meals enjoyed together. They really are a trusted source of high quality protein for families all across the country. You can choose how often your box comes. So if you want it to come monthly, you can do that every six weeks. You can always cancel at any time. You can change your shipment date at any time. So if your needs fluctuate on how often you need one, and then it always ships for free. So I mentioned earlier, if you use the link in my description box, you will get a special deal. Right now, if you become a brand new member, you are gonna receive a pound of bacon free in every box for the lifetime of your membership. So be sure to go check that out today. Sign up, get your first box, get your bacon for free, and you'll thank me later. Y'all, this meat is so high quality, your family's gonna love it. Okay, for our second recipe, we're changing things up. It is going to be a dessert, and it is actually our subby supper, or our subby dessert. Today's subby dessert comes from Irene. Irene says she is 64 years young and still very active. She recently retired from 44 years of work in retail. She said she loves to cook anything, including candy and baked goods, and she's always sharing whatever she cooks or bakes with her neighbors. Get this, y'all, I love this. She even bakes or makes doggy biscuits for her rescue dog, Rudy. She's a very creative person, crafts, are a big part of her life. She designs her own clothes. She loves to knit and crochet. Fun fact, she said all of her ornaments on her Christmas tree are all crocheted by her. So Irene, I hope you continue to enjoy your retirement. It sounds like you have plenty to keep you busy. Thank you so much for sharing your recipe. So the recipe that Irene has shared with us is a chocolate banana icebox cake. Other than milk, this is all we need. We need a banana. We need the large box of cook and serve chocolate pudding and some graham crackers. This is my kind of baking. It's not even baking. It's my kind of dessert because it doesn't require baking. There you go. Okay, I've got my pot here. I'm starting to heat it up. We're just gonna follow the directions on this. So this is the large box. It is five ounces and it says to use three cups of milk. Yes. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's get started. So while I'm waiting on this chocolate pudding to come up to a bowl, it takes a little while and you have to kind of stand here and stir it. As I'm standing here stirring, I just remembered that Irene said that you could really change this up, this icebox cake. You could do a different type of pudding. You can do a different fruit. So you could do vanilla with strawberries or whatever you choose, honestly. She said it's fun to come up with different variations of this. And then you can serve it with either Cool Whip or whipped cream on top. She said she really likes this chocolate banana one because it reminds her of a banana split. Fun fact, my favorite ice cream of all time is just a banana split because it has all three different ice creams, at least the place that I go to, it has all three different ice creams, chocolate, banana, vanilla, strawberry. And then it has pineapple, banana, and strawberries on top. Oh, so good. I go to a place called Brewster's to get mine. I love anything chocolate and banana, so this one was right up my alley. But feel free to change this however you like. So I need this to cool a little bit. So I stuck it right into my fridge. I'm just gonna let this start to cool while I start getting everything else ready. So on the bottom of this square dish, she said to, you're gonna be using one whole thing of graham crackers. These are called the fresh stacks. They're packaged a little bit differently, I guess, so you can eat through them quicker and they don't go stale. I don't know. So I'm guessing I'll need two of these because I think two of these would be the same as one regular pack of graham crackers. Okay, so let's start by just lining the bottom of this dish with our graham crackers. Oh, that fits perfectly. Our pudding is still pretty hot, but I think it'll be fine. I'm going to layer some pudding on top and make a huge mess, no doubt. 
just going to spread that out as much as I can. Now we're gonna add some chopped banana directly on top. Did I say chopped banana, sliced banana? Let's go in with another layer of our graham crackers. More pudding and the other half of the banana. I don't know that I'm supposed to do another layer, but we're gonna do another layer of the graham cracker. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this press and seal wrap over top of it. And this is gonna go in the fridge for at least a couple of hours. We'll eat this tonight after dinner. Okay, y'all, for our third recipe, I'm just making a side dish. We have a lot of leftovers. I've been cooking a lot lately. We're gonna eat our leftovers as our main part of our dish, or meal, but I'm gonna make a brand new side dish for tonight. There's no part of the title of this that I'm not excited about. It is Brussels sprouts and bacon pesto pasta. Boom. Okay, for this recipe, you need eight ounces of uncooked pasta. I don't have quite eight ounces in this shells box, so I've got some large elbows that I can use. So this is just to use up what you have kind of night. So I'm bringing this pot of water up to a bowl and then we will go ahead and cook this according to package directions. And I need to pull out four slices of bacon. I need to chop them up and cook them. What you doing? Talk to me. Okay, so right now what I'm gonna do is thinly slice our Brussels. So I'm gonna cut off the end and thinly slice. Fun task. Okay, we're done here. I'm gonna turn this eye off for now. And we're gonna remove our bacon and let it kind of drain here on these paper towels. We are gonna leave a little bit of grease, maybe like a tablespoon or so behind because we're gonna cook our Brussels sprouts in the bacon grease. Okay, so I went ahead and drained my pasta once it was done. We're just gonna set it back here. We will come back to that. I've turned my large skillet back to about medium heat. I reserved about a tablespoon of the bacon grease in there. And now we're gonna add all of our thinly sliced Brussels. Okay, we're just gonna saute these for about five minutes, three to five minutes. I'll just kind of keep an eye on them. Gotta get them coated there. Are you happy? I am happy. <laughs> I like doing that. I know you do. All right, uh, when are we gonna add the bacon? Uh, later. But here, since you're already over there, yeah. why don't you throw us some red pepper flakes in there? I love throwing. That's what we do around. We don't pinch nothing, we just throw. Yeah. This is optional, y'all. You can take this part out if you wanted to, obviously. And then some salt and pepper. Y'all, if I tried to do that, they would be everywhere. Y'all, leave a comment below. Can you do this? Do you do this? Or would you be like me and just throw it all on the floor? It's been about three or four minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in about a tablespoon of minced garlic. And we're just gonna saute this for another 30 seconds to one minute. Now let's throw in the rest of our ingredients. Let's add our bacon back in. Add in our pasta, the juice of one lemon, about three or four tablespoons of pesto. We'll start with a good three heaping tablespoons and we'll see how that goes. That smells so good. I'm gonna add a little more pesto just because. More pesto, please. I mean, there's not much left in this jar, so. Yeah, see? We should just use the rest of it, right? We should. Oh yeah, it wouldn't be anything without Parmesan right. cheese. Right, so we're only gonna add like a quarter cup. Let's let that melt down, and once it melts, we are ready to eat. I know this says it's a side dish, but honestly, I feel like this could stand alone if you wanted it to. This looks amazing. We have a lot of leftovers. <laughs> this is supposed to be our side dish. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. The pesto with the bacon. Mm -hmm. Oh, a little bit of that red pepper flake now. Okay. Just a little spice in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's amazing. Man, and then the texture of, you know, sort of the rustic texture of the Brussels, Brussels sprouts. Brussels, yeah. A little bit of a crunch in there. Yeah. And then the pasta comes in and smooths everything out. So would you say this is one of your favorite side dishes mm. that you've ever tried? You look pretty impressed over there. It's really good. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig in. I can't, I can't wait. I'll be right back. Y'all, Steven just had a great idea. First of all, I love this. It is so good. I love all of these flavors together. I mean, all of the ingredients to this are some of my favorites, but you could even do this with an Alfredo sauce and or a marinara sauce and just make this a full meal in and of itself. I mean, if you really wanted, if you wanted to go, to go meatless, you could just leave out the bacon if you had to, but there's so much flavor and it's so filling to be such a, to be a side dish because it has pasta and 
it's just amazing. You need to give this a try. And if you try it with Alfredo sauce, let us know in the comments. So it's time to do the taste test of our wasabi supper. I should have made some homemade whipped cream. Mm. I didn't. I dropped the ball. Um, but I have to tell you, I was just checking out some comments on my latest video and somebody said Stephen could be a food critic with the way that he is very descriptive when he is eating the food and describing the food. So I told him, I, he was in the other room, I said, hey, somebody said you could be a food critic. And what did you say? First of all, I laughed. <laughs> and then I said, I can be a food eater. <laughs> You see the banana in there? Yeah, Cool Whip on top of this or whipped cream on top of this. We'll mm -hmm. take it over the top. I see some, look at that jiggle. Kind of jiggles a little bit. I like that. It doesn't jiggle, jiggle. It folds. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's gonna be my head now. Cheers. All right, cheers. Mm-hmm. Mm, I didn't get any banana in mine. Hold on. Wow. That is so smooth. The cracker is not crunchy. The pudding really softened the graham crackers up. Mm -hmm. So, oh man, that's good. Mm. Yes, that is so soft. Mmm. Man, that is lovely. It's soft and good. Mm -hmm. Grandma would be mm. proud. Yeah, no. You need to get your own piece. <laughs> Irene. Thank you so much for sending this over. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this winter dinners video. If you did, if you would just give me a thumbs up. That really does help out my channel. Also, before you leave, don't forget to check out the description box below. Go check out Butcher Box and new members are going to get bacon for life. They're gonna get one pound of bacon in every box for the lifetime of their membership. See y'all next time. Bye. Oh, I didn't set a timer for my pasta. See, when you multitask, you do a lot of things, but none of them do you do really well. <laughs> oh, you both got popped. <laughs> I did get popped. Did you? Yeah, I'm just demonstrating what not to do with frying bacon. <laughs> Goofy. What is on, hold on. There's something on that. We need to start that over, don't we? Uh, yeah. Man. Now I done smudged I it. Smudge it a little bit there. We're gonna do this number. There you go. This is very technical. Mm-hmm. Slow dance with my uh, dessert. Does it jiggle, jiggle? It folds? No. <laughs> it doesn't jiggle, jiggle. Yes, it does. I mean, yeah, it does. <laughs> it jiggle, jiggles. It and does. it folds. Look. Oh, it does fold. Look, it, it, it's folded over. That's stupid. Y'all know what song that is, right? Oh, yeah. Sure. Surely y'all know what I'm talking There's about. There's only been three billion people that's heard it. <laughs> I was going to say something. I don't remember what I was going to say. You was going to say, honey, I love you. And I think you're awesome. And I love it when you talk with your mouth full. That's what I was going to say. All right, I'm about to get my get own, own plate. Own. That's right. We'll see y'all later. We're going to eat. Bye.